and Babbitt's decomposition. Thanks a lot. And yeah, thanks a lot for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here in this uh, nice seminar. So, uh, as it has been said, I will be speaking on strongly sigma lethal different algebras. Somewhat a long title and Babbitt's decomposition. Explain all the words in the title in a few minutes, but I like to start with some uh, standard commutative algebra to uh, the way what I've been doing. So um, we call that. Um, so, so the main point of uh, the talk will be to um, to introduce a notion of uh, to introduce a class uh, of uh, difference algebras which is uh, a difference analog of etal algebra. So let me start by recalling what is uh, an etal algebra. So if k is uh, a field, and a a k algebra, so it's commutative k algebra, so all in this talk, all rings will be commutative. And so when k algebra is called etal, If it is a finite direct product of fields when you tensor it up to the algebraic closure of the base thing. So do a phase extension to the algebraic closure of K, and then this should be a finite direct product of, of the field. Okay, so an um, equivalent way. To say this is that the, the dimension of A as a K vector space is finite and A tensor of K, where capital K is uh, any uh, field extension of uh, little k is reduced. All field extensions k over k. Yet another equivalent way is to say that uh, A is a finite direct product of, uh, of uh, finite separable uh, field extensions of k. So the characteristic is arbitrary? Yes, characteristic is arbitrary. Yeah. And for the geometry behind it among us, this basically means that the variety corresponding to A contains finitely many points, and they are not stupid double points. Yes, precisely. That's the, that's the, the geometric intuition. So uh, it means like geometrically, uh, a dog algebra is just a finite set of points, but OK, because we're not over an algebraic or a closed field, it also contains some like arithmetic information. Yeah, and there's no, no weird points. Like it's really just. Just a set. Now, if R is any finitely generated the algebra, then we can look at by zero of R, which by definition is the union. of R, and so this is a subset of R, and in fact, one can show that this is a, a sub-algebra of R. Okay, so, so it's defined as this unit, but it's, uh, so it's, in fact, it's the, the largest um, adult sub-algebra of R. Here R is any finitely generated K-algebra. And uh, this is uh, related uh, to the geometry. Uh, for example, to the dimension 
of I0 of R as a k vector space is the number of connected components connected components but over the over the algebraic closure. So of spec of R tensor to the algebraic closure. For example, if R is the coordinate ring of some affine algebraic group, so for some affine algebraic group G, then can show that by zero of the coordinate ring of G is a <coughs> is a hop sub algebra okay, so um, because uh, the coordinate ring of G is, so it's a course we take. So the group structure on G induces the structure of a Hopf algebra on the coordinate ring. And so now one can show that by zero is a Hopf stop algebra. The coordinate ring of the quotient of G by the connected component. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to say that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and really, so that, that's it. So this is a hop sub algebra, and the dual morphism, okay, so the category of, of uh, hop algebras is uh, and the equivalent to the category of the affine group schemes. So um, an inclusion of Hopf algebras corresponds to the subjective morphism of uh, algebraic groups. So we have a subjection from G to by zero of G, so to the corresponding uh, to, to the algebraic group corresponding to the Hopf algebra. So this is just one, this is just the spec of I Q is pi zero of kg. Um, no, this, is, this is pi zero being overloaded. So this, so this is oh. uh, so I define oh. I define this now. So this is an algebraic group. Right. And I okay. can define it as a spec of pi zero of okay. kg. So it's, it's just the, the algebraic group um, corresponding yeah. to that of yeah, algebra. Okay. And the dual morphism has a kernel, the identity component of G. So in fact, this is a, a way to define the uh, identity component of G. So you start with the coordinate ring, you define by zero, you know that it's a Hopsop algebra, okay, then you get the corresponding morphism of uh, algebraic groups, and you define G0 as the kernel of that. Okay, so this it might be kind of a bit, little bit unusual definition of G0, so it's not using any topology, uh, but then in fact, so for example, if you're doing, a, if you're working in, in positive characteristic, mm -hmm. uh, you might have uh, non-reduced groups, and so it's, uh, you cannot just work with the topology, like, because on a closed subset, you might have different uh, subscheme structures. And so if you want to define uh, G0 as a closed uh, subscheme, you have to say more about it than just saying what is uh, the closed subset on which it is defined. Okay, so. 
And this is one way to do it. So in, in fact, yes, yeah, so we have, um, so in fact from this you see that by zero of g is really just the quotient of g by the identity component. Okay, so the main motivation for me to uh, consider this uh, this difference analog of uh, the algebra I will uh, speak about is uh, was the, the aim to do a different version of this construction. We want to have a, a different connected component for a different algebra group. Okay, so I will not speak uh, about different algebra groups in this talk. So um, I've already given <laughs> enough talks about different algebraic groups, I guess. Uh, but actually, so actually, the, the last time I was here, I was speaking about this. Uh, I, I was mentioning this difference connected component, but I was actually cheating a little, little bit. And so today, I'm more telling you how how you actually do it. Okay, and, and you can do it with this with a difference analog of this uh, by zero. This is what I will speak about. So, in the, um, how far does it end up being from other notions of connected components for different algebraic groups? Um, I guess there's the quotient topology. Uh, sorry, the com topology. Yes. And so. And then there is, of course, the connected component in the model theoretic sense, which usually is not even definable. Yes. Okay. So it's. Uh, Smaller subgroups. So so, so 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 when uh, when when comparing these things, no. <laughs> it's uh, maybe the, the first point we have to make clear is uh, um, like what, what how how to actually compare it because so the, the notion of of a different such bright group I would be using is uh, not quite the same as uh, um, like the, the things in the model theory sense and also it's not. Um, so clear, um, I mean, the cone topology, you would, um, <coughs> like, if, if you would assume, like, like, just for simplicity, assume that K is like a, a difference closed field, mm -hmm. and, and you have the cone topology, like, on, on the K, what I would call the K points mm -hmm. of, of the group, and oh, then the it. The um, is still messy. Sorry? But the scheme theory is still messy. Yeah, then it's. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, so you, you lose, um, yeah, there, there's, there's many things which you don't see on, on, on the K-point, um, but, so, so there's, there's a, so it, it has a, in, ter in terms of the spectrum of the coordinate tree, this has a nice, a nice description, mm -hmm. and uh, so you can uh, define the, um, Okay, let me let me do it just just very briefly. So if whenever you have a difference ring, a difference ring is a, a ring with an endomorphism. Yep. Um, it induces a map on on the spectrum, mm -hmm. and you can def you define a subset of spec of R to be sigma closed if it is closed with respect to the usual topology and uh, stable under sigma. Mm -hmm. And so this is a topology, call it the, the sigma topology, and uh, the connected components. With respect to this um, topology, um, they uh, correspond to this. Um, okay, so there is there is the identity element. So if 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 G is a coordinate ring of a different such a group, you have the identity element, and then you have the connected component containing the identity element, and then um, the underlying topological space of uh, of G zero defined like that. Is uh, is the um, sim is this sigma connected component? Okay. If, if, if Felix asks you if you can define it uh, in terms of, uh, I was wondering. Yeah. Oh, I was wondering if you could give the uh, pure group definition of the identity component as the smallest subgroup of finite. In is that finite? In yes. So so but smallest it, subgroup, abstract subgroup of finite index. Yes, so it's you, you can um, define it by some 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 universal property if you want. So so it's uh, so I let's say um, maybe okay. We start with the different algebraic group G. I consider all 
morphisms from G to a different satisfying group H such that, um, okay, so it's H is finite, but okay, what do we mean by H is finite? So, it, so actually, so we want, so actually, so we want K, so the coordinate ring for the so this is a difference algebraic group, uh -huh. so this is the, the difference coordinate ring of H. So this is, um, so finite is, is, is kind of, so we have to say what it means, finite, so we, because we don't want to just speak about its K points. So, oh, one, oh, so one thing of, to say finite is that it's finite dimensional as a K vector space, the coordinate ring. Uh -huh. but we even ask it to be a tall. And I don't want to use any words like a tall, just group theory. Okay, so yeah, okay. So 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 you, you only want to speak about That's the problem, I guess. About that. Okay, we, we, we can yeah. do that. Yeah, probably not. And um okay. Then it's yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have to be that. So let me not say something completely yeah. wrong. But the, if, if you only want to speak about that, yes, so this is, uh, yeah. this is uh, finite, and so you have some, some, uh, some sigma on it, and that sigma needs to be uh, by checking. That's, that's some additional requirement. Is it sufficient for the definition of what's a consequence? So, yeah. Yeah. okay, so, so, so there is, so it's, let, let, let me finish this, uh, yeah, this yeah, statement. Yeah. So, we can, so among, so let, let's call this, uh, this property is strongly sigma it does, okay? So it's. Uh, Could you break the chop, please? Okay. Well, okay, so, so this is um, just some, some property yeah, which is. More or less the same as saying that this is finite, okay. And uh, then you 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 say that you you can show that among all these uh, morphisms there exists a universal one, and then um, this universal one is then this morphism. But, but yeah. precisely. And so what are the conditions on K? So, so that uh, on H. Conditions on K. On K. Little K. On little K, so that your definition is equivalent to having uh, the property with H being finite. Okay, so there yeah. is, so in, in fact, so there is, um, so speaking about comparing G and the K points of G. Which is finiteness. Oh, but wait a minute. We, we have a more particular question about uh, being finite. So Felix wants to say, um, Nicely written definition, but all technicalities. Mm -hmm. So, what are the sufficient conditions you impose on K so that you can write a nice definition with finiteness? So, there is no condition on K which makes the general, which allow you to write the, the the conditions in a purely group theoretical statement. So, you can do something similar. You can do something purely group theoretic if you replace G by Points. The K points of G, but that's good. But but you lose. So so if you do this, that's always good. <laughs> you, you you can never go back to to G yeah. in general. So, so it's not going to P, will it? So 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 G is a different algebraic group. Yeah. But G yeah. is a group. So G. So so okay. So sorry. Okay. So yeah. So actually, I'm speaking about different algebraic group. Again, um, oh, so a different such a pipe group. The way I want to use it, right, is a functor from the category of k sigma algebra to the category of groups, and this means it gives you a group for, each for any k sigma algebra R. And of course, so you can take the k points, but the k points might contain, so even if, no matter how big is K and no matter how many fields uh, you, you take there, G of K will always contain much, so will often contain much less information than, yes, than G. Can you determine whether the group are, are, are you know, connected by, by the No, no, right. yeah. no, it's, 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 
it's it's not. So let me do, do just just one example. So, which, uh, that, so you mean there are no conditions so that for the that value expresses in terms of uh, yes 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 but yes. But shouldn't, we cannot do shouldn't the points whatever you call it of pi zero of g be the number of component the cardinality of pi zero of g be the number of connected components? There is Spen something uh, very similar to what you're saying. Yeah. So, um, so in eventually, so that would be the index would be the would be uh, the cardinality of g mod g zero. Yeah, there is and something that's finite very, index. very similar to. But you, maybe you can't find the smallest with finite index. And yes. So there's there's there yeah. some technicalities. I but suppose you, if you're working if, really in the Hopper algebra instead, it yeah. makes it difficult to say that. I guess. Yeah, so, so I can make uh, yeah, so a clear geometric uh, statement. Can you do algebraic without... Uh, yes, yes, algebra. okay. So, um, we can speak about a coordinate ring of G mod G0, okay? The difference coordinate ring. Right. Yes. Okay? So what, what's the key property? So this is... So actually, I, I would denote this like something like, this is the sigma G0, okay? Oh, yeah. Oh. Is the, the sigma identity component? That's right. Okay. That so, and what can we say about it, about this? Um, so it will be finite dimensional as a K vector space, oh. and in fact, so it will be oh. uh, what I was going. To, it, it will be a, what I will call a strongly sigma dial uh, K sigma algebra. So, so can your phase physicists uh, propose regarding the definition so that G zero is the smallest? Well, something. So the this is finite dimension. Maybe. Yes. So so you can say something that's um, that's in, in terms um, in terms of of Hopf algebra. So in terms of okay. So saying that. Uh, some subgroup is the, is the smallest. Is saying that um, that the quotient is uh, is the largest. Is saying that the uh, subhoff algebra is the the largest. Okay, so it's uh, um, so the coordinate ring of uh, G mod zero, so this is contained in the coordinate ring of G, right? So, and this is the largest mm -hmm. K-sigma subalgebra okay, such that some nice properties are satisfied. Mm -hmm. For example, it is um, Finite dimension, for example, it's finite dimension as a k-vector space. It's it's an Edal k algebra, and there is one additional diff, sort of different algebra condition, which basically means, if you think about it geometrically, if you like to think that this is just a finite set of points, mm -hmm. then there is an action of sigma on this finite set of, po of points, and the requirement is that sigma is a permutation. Right. Okay, that sigma is okay. a, it's an automorphism, not just an endomorphism. Yeah, that's yeah, the that's geometric uh, picture. Yeah, so you can define it by this uh, this uh, universal property. It, it's a uh, it's the uh, so the connected uh, component is uh, the, group, the smallest uh, group with uh, some some nice property. Yeah. yeah, but it's slightly difficult. It's somewhat technical to uh, to to make the precise statement. And in fact, so you can um, oh, so you can read the number of uh, yeah. Connected uh, of, of sigma connected components from the from the coordinate dream. So if you think about it as a finite set with an uh, automorphism, then the number of sigma connected components, assuming the base field is uh, is large enough, is the number of uh, orbits of that uh, automorphism on that finite set.
Okay, so the, the motivation, so the, the goal is to do the, the difference analog of, uh, of uh, by zero. So, and then also, as I already indicated here, so we need some, some extra condition, um, some difference condition as well. Yeah, could, you, could you explain the motivation for the goal? The Besides, motivation for? for the goal. For what? For the goal. goal. Oh. For the goal? Yes. The motivation for the motivation, yes. you mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Like why one you mean like why why one would be interested in the difference connected component? No, no, we, but you defined it already. So what's what's the point of this? What do you mean I defined it already? The difference connected component. That's the way how you define it actually. Ah, so the diff, I mean the difference analog. No, not through. This, this doesn't lend itself to. Uh, yeah. So so but. Pure group theory. I'm, I, I, didn't, I haven't said it yet. I, like, I mean, I'm not yeah. made a complete yeah. statement. Yeah. 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 With some property. Yes, yeah. so let, let, let's, let's explain this property. I can explain this property. That's all. Okay. Yeah. But that's good. Yeah. Okay, let, let's explain. Let, let's. Let's. Uh, just explain this. Uh, so, so, if so, if. So maybe that. If you want to do the different analog of this, <coughs> so maybe the first attempt you, you want to try. Is you just say okay, let's take for the difference version, let's take just the union of all etal subalgebras, which are also difference algebras. Okay, mm -hmm. and but then you will find that this will not give you a Hopf subalgebra. Okay, there is an example it shows that if you take just the union of all different subalgebras, which are Ital SK algebras, this will not be a Hopf subalgebra. This will be a subalgebra, but it will not be a Hopf subalgebra. So you have to do some something more. Why not? Well, there is an example. I could give you the example, but it's not that. Yeah, but what breaks down from the usual proof? Okay, so there is. Um, so it's it's not the, the, that construction would not be compatible with the with the tensor product. Oh, so okay. if if you want if you want to show that okay. that, that the, it, it will give a Hopf subalgebra. So that you need some also it's, it's geometrically not that meaningful. Like uh, yeah, you have to put some extra sigma condition. To really get the, the sigma connected components geometrically. What if you take a, um, an element of, of k square bracket g and take all its sigma iterates? Is that does that generate a finite dimensional vector space over k? But that depends on the element. But if, if you take an element inside uh, yeah, well, by that, zero sigma, the then, yeah, then, then, then it's okay. <laughs> the, yeah, then it's finite dimensional. Yeah, yeah. 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 depends on that. A Picard-Bessio sort of. Yeah, yeah, okay. If, if it was <laughs> so, something like that, then it would be. Yeah. 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 Okay, so let, let's speak about this extra difference condition which we need. So, if R is a K sigma algebra. Okay, so a difference ring for me is just a cumulative ring with an endomorphism. It's not required to be injective. And a K sigma algebra. Just a K algebra equipped with an endomorphism such that the endomorphism on R extends the endomorphism on K. So that's what we call a K sigma algebra. And we say that it is sigma separable. So this notion has been used by, by several people. Um, I think uh, Roshovsky used it. Uh, First one to use it. Yes, so by the way, I should have said uh, this is a joint work with Ivan Domasic. Um, so we call this uh, sigma separable if sigma is injective on R for any extension of uh, different fields. So Sigma is not just injective on R, but it stays injective for every extension.
extension of the base field. Okay, so in here, the sigma is just given as, as usual, so sigma of r and so on. sigma of lambda. equivalent way to say this is that if elements f1 to fn in R are k-linearly independent, then sigma f1 to sigma fn in R are also linearly independent. So you can show that these two conditions are equivalent. So in general, if you if you have a, a K sigma algebra such that sigma is injective on R, it might happen that if you expand extend the base field, that sigma does not stay injective. Okay, but if it stays injective for all uh, extensions of the base field, then we call that a sigma separate. It doesn't matter whether the sigma is subjective or negative. Yeah. That's so, like this definition. if uh, sigma is subjective, if it's on, not subjective. Is, is this still a or does it, does it, is There it, is no it, condition on little k in this talk whatsoever. No, no, for, uh, for, 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 for uh, big k. Okay, so does it's it matter for your definition okay, whether sigma is subjective, is subjective yeah. or negative? Little k? A little k or big k? Sigma big k. extension. Look at that. Oh, r is a k thing. So it's for linear or the it doesn't matter. So here, the, here in the second statement, there is no no capital k, right? So ah, when ah, oh, yeah. k, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I didn't notice that either. That's nice. So, um, but speaking speaking about the, this question, so if if little k. Is, so if sigma is an automorphism on little k, then one can show that uh, R is uh, sigma separable if and only if sigma is injective on R. Okay, so this is this is some kind of problem which only occurs um, if if little k is not inverse in this sense. Okay, but so this is really similar to um, what you know about. Uh, Separable field extension. This is like the statement saying that any field extension of a perfect field is uh, separable. So, so the example, so if L over K is a field extension of uh, positive characteristic P, then can Think of L and K as different fields by um, taking as sigma de Frobenius, so A goes to A to the power B, then L over K is separable as a field extension. So this is the usual definition of separable if and only if L over K is sigma separate with this uh, sigma. What you said is that this notion of sigma separability is probably first due to Khrushchevsky, mm -hmm. and where can one find this stuff written down, including this equivalence business that you're saying? Okay, so Khrushchevsky, so actually I think he, he just uses it for field okay. extension, and he, his definition is, um, he's saying, He's saying something like um, R and uh, and the inverse of closure of K are um, linearly disjoint. So I wasn't so much asking for over, the precise definition. Over K. He had as more references where one can. Yes, so I can get the page in the preprint. Of uh, the Fushovsky's uh, paper, or like the, the oh, Fubinus okay. okay, paper, so it's in the on, on, on where he's using. Yes, so, so and I can, I think, 
This equivalence. This equivalence is uh, okay. I I proved that. Okay. <laughs> and, Do you have it written down anywhere? Yes, yes, I have it written down, and I can give you that. Yeah. Okay, awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. In fact, there's there's a lot of other equivalent definitions. Yeah, okay. but but it's it's really similar to um, the equivalent definitions of uh, the separable algebra. Mm -hmm. It's just you you replace the Frobenius endomorphism with with sigma, and everything works just the same way. Okay, so this is some more or less a technical condition, which is this is some, some difference algebra condition, which is uh, which may seem a bit technical, but which is really useful. Yeah, so thinking geometrically, um, we were all speaking about this, uh, thinking about this finite set, then the, the sigma is injective, it kind of means that uh, geometrically it's subjective, and because then the set is finite, sigma needs to be an automorphism. So this is the, the geometric uh, idea. And now let's, let's give the definition of um, strongly sigma is down. A k sigma algebra R is called strongly sigma is down. So if it is is down as a, as a k algebra, so in particular it's finite dimensional as a k-vector space and sigma separable. Okay, so this is the additional, so sigma separability is the additional technical difference algebra property which we, which we're asking for. So, and you can show that this is uh, a nice class of, uh, of different algebras. So for example, uh, a different subalgebra of a strongly sigma dog, different algebra will again be strongly sigma dog. So a quotient of a strongly differentiated dog, different algebra, by some different idea, will again be strongly sigma dog. And also the tensor product of two strongly sigma dog, K sigma algebras, will again be strongly sigma dog. Okay, so this is a, a nice class of different algebras. And so as we had it before for, for those algebraic groups here, we want to consider the union of all strongly sigma et al. subalgebras for an arbitrary a sigma algebra. So if I is the case sigma algebra, the difference version of uh, by zero. So sometimes it's useful to also indicate decay in the notation. So I will do it like that. So we define this as the union of strongly sigma is K sigma. subalgebra. Okay, and you can show that this is indeed a K sigma subalgebra of R. Okay, so this is our difference analog of uh, by zero, and you can show that it has uh, all the uh, nice factorial properties which you could wish for. So, for example, you can show that it's uh, stable under 
extension of the base field. So if our sum um, is sigma algebra and we have a k, an extension of difference field, so by by zero sigma of R, and then you extend it, this is the same as by zero sigma of R, okay, and then you extend the base field, so it's compatible, the construction is compatible, this extension of the base field, and also the construction is compatible with uh, the tensor product. So if you have two k sigma algebras R and S, then by zero sigma of R tensor K S is the tensor product of by zero sigma R with uh, by zero sigma S. Um, I missed the condition on S. What, what's so the R and S are K sigma algebra. Just any, okay. Just any, okay. yeah. Thank you. And so in general, you can think of by zero sigma as, as being a functor. So if you have a morphism of K sigma algebras from R to S, so this will induce, just by restricting that morphism, this will induce a morphism from by zero sigma of R to by zero sigma of S. So you, you, you really land in by zero sigma of S because the quotient of uh, strongly sigma eta k sigma algebra is again a strongly sigma eta k sigma algebra. Okay, so this, this is a, it's a functor and it's uh, compatible with the tensor product and from, from this uh, Properties, you immediately get that if R has the structure of a K sigma Hopf algebra, then also by zero sigma of R will be uh, will inherit the structure of Hopf algebra. So if R is a K sigma of algebra. So this just means that. R is a K sigma algebra, uh, which also carries the structure of uh, Hopf algebra over K, and the structure maps of the Hopf algebra are such that they commute with sigma. So the structure maps are morphisms of K sigma algebra. Okay, so you, you, you write the, so the proof, so if there is a K sigma Hopf algebra, then by zero sigma of R, is a <coughs> of sub algebra. And to, to prove this, you just uh, you write the um, the diagram for the uh, morphisms of the of this of the structure morphisms, and then you just uh, you, you apply this factor. And, and you immediately get the, the result. So, okay, so I'll uh, we'll do two more. Um, so this was like maybe say the first application of uh, by zero sigma, and I'd like to speak about two more applications of like what by zero sigma is uh, useful for. In the title, I also had this static uh, decomposition, and I will next speak about static decomposition. I don't assume you, you you know what it is, so I will. Yeah, so I will not explain the. So I will start by explaining the the improved version, which you can get by. By using by zero sigma, 
and then I will uh, make a comment about the original version of, of Babbitt's decomposition. Okay, so one application of uh, this by zero sigma is that you can use it to prove an improved version of a classical theorem which is called Babbitt's decomposition. Okay, and I will explain this. So in, in different such so in, this is an improved version as compared to the original version. And I will make a comment on what is the what the improvements are. So the motivation in general for Babbitt's decomposition is that in in difference algebra it's uh, it's not trivial to understand the uh, algebraic extensions of, uh, of different fields of a given uh, um, different field. Like in differential algebra, that's, the, the problem is kind of, it's not interesting because um, if you have an algebraic extension, the derivation always extend uh, uniquely. And so studying algebraic extensions of different, sorry, of, of differential fields it's really the same as studying algebraic extensions of field. Okay, so but in the difference case, there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, things going on because there there might be, there might be uh, several ways of, of extending sigma to an algebraic extension, and sometimes you might not be able to extend it. And so, okay. so we assume that L over k is a finitely sigma generated extension of sigma fields. So finally, sigma generated means that you can write L as a field generated by some finite set, but the generation is in the sense of different algebra. So you can add all these sets for the generation. Yes? Isn't it sometimes you might not be able to extend an, an automorphism to mm -hmm. an algebraic extension? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have an obvious example in mind? Um, yes, so um, I don't let me think. If not, then I'm, I'm, I'm really sure that there is one. So, so, so the problem, um, why you can, so you can always extend it, say, to the the algebraic closure, but the problem is like if it's uh, so if if problem is so if you have a, a solution um, of uh, so if f of a is zero and you need to define uh, what what sigma, what sigma of a is so if you want to extend sigma what, what is that? so if if oh, f, f is some, some, some okay. yeah, yeah, so say yeah, if yeah. f is the minimum polynomial uh -huh. of a yeah. Yeah. so yeah. You, yeah. you need uh -huh. you will need sigma of a to satisfy the polynomial which you obtain from f by applying sigma to the coefficients. Oh, I see. And you might not okay, have root. such okay. a root. Such a okay. okay, 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 okay. Okay. Thank you. So, and we assume here, so in general, we would like to understand um, algebraic uh, extension, but um, if, if you have uh, an algebraic extension with, with a sigma, you can also you can also um, find the sigma on the on the Galois closure, and so so this is um, we assume that it's not it's some restriction, but it's not that much of a restriction if you assume that L over k is uh, Galois. Okay, that's that's the assumption. So we have a. An extension of different field, which is Galois, just in the usual sense. It's not fi it's not finite Galois, but it's just Galois. For example, it can be the separable algebraic closure of. So sorry, usually it cannot be because we require it to be finitely sigma generated. And then, so what's the the statement is of this theorem is there exists a chain. 
So this is a, a structure theorem for this uh, type of, uh, of extension. And there exists a chain of intermediate sigma fields of L over K. Okay, such that. Okay, so this chain has some, some nice properties. We start with K and then comes by zero sigma L over K and then comes some, some intermediate fields. And they have some nice properties. So here all these extensions are what we call benign. I will define that in a moment, what it means to be benign. And this here is uh, what we call sigma radicio. So in particular, so this, this is uh, finite. And also this one is, is finite. So, and, and these are infinite, these are all infinite in benign extensions, but they are, in a certain sense, very easy. And these benign extensions, they all come from usual Galois extensions of the base field, without any sigma. They all, so these, these, these are extensions of different fields, but they are constructed from an extension of uh, fields without any sigma. Okay, so that's the, the general statement. So given any finitely generated extension of different fields, such as the underlying field extension is gamma, and you can decompose it into such a uh, sequence where here is something special, but it's finite, this is kind of uh, uh, easy, and here also this is something special, and but it's finite, and all, all the others are infinite, but they're kind of easy, and I will describe the, them more precisely. Do you mean that L, L over Ln is finite dimensional as the Ln vector space? Yes, precisely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what's the word after sigma? Yeah, finite extension. Radical. Ah, sigma radicio. 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 What is that? I, I, I'm not sure radicio <laughs> is the correct English pronunciation, but it's written like that. Radicio. radicio. So I can yeah. write it more radicio. clearly. What does it mean? Radicio. I don't know how you, how, how, how you say it. Radicio. 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 Yeah, radicio. 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 Riley, my English teacher, school, said, yeah, Sigma <laughs> 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 It's stuck with you, right? She was very particular. Okay, so let me make a comment on the on the original version of that theorem. It, it was moved by, by Barry a long time ago. And so he had something else here. He had the, what is called the core of L over K here. So the core of L over K is uh, something uh, a little bit bigger than by zero sigma. And oh. he, he had, he had uh, the assumption that the ground field K is inversive. Oh. Okay. And also he had, he had something a little bit different here. So that's maybe a, a minor point. Oh, is this an end? Um, Comments. The, the end. Yeah, actually, no, uh, so, so as it is stated here, it's not unique, so you, you can... So there exists um, an N, actually, also. Yeah, so, so that, uh, there exists, there exists an, N. an N, yeah. But it, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting question. Um, hmm. You can ask, can ask yourself, like, if this, uh, um, like, if there is some, some uniqueness... Some, one, right? some uniqueness properties here. But, so actually, I think for, for fields, um, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I rather don't think that, that for fields you get a, a nice statement, but I was uh, doing something really similar for, for different algebraic groups. And uh, yeah, I was having this, this question in mind about the uniqueness for different algebraic groups, and for a long time I was thinking it's probably not working, but by now I, I think <laughs> there, there should be something. Um, uh, yeah, so 
Yeah, it, it would be something like a uh, Schulen Holder theorem, but it's. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, there's just there's some technicalities. These strange with, with, with this strange emotion. Yes, so you have to like to find the right uh, uh, notion of equivalence also, and that, that's um, yeah. I think for groups maybe that that there will be some uniqueness. Hmm. Is it obvious that the first extension is finite? Um, it so it's it's fault so it's not completely obvious. Okay. It follows. From the fact that um, mm -hmm. L over K is uh, okay. finitely sigma generated. Okay. So, um, so, yeah, actually, so it's. I think. So, I mean, the LI is also finite, sigma finitely generated? No. So, the, so, L over K is assumed to be finitely sigma generated. Right. Yeah. And um, there is a general theorem stating. That, that any intermediate field of a uh, finitely generated difference field is yeah. itself finitely difference oh, generated. Okay. And this is also what you would use here to show that this uh -huh. is finitely. So that, that's in any characteristics, though. Yeah, that's in any yeah. characteristic. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Which it already worked in characteristics. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, so by the way, this is a, it's an interesting question. Um, so if R is any finitely sigma generated K sigma algebra is by zero sigma finitely sigma generated. So if it's finitely sigma generated, it will actually will be finite as a K vector space. Oh. Uh -huh. So and I mean the, the analogous statement is true for, for algebras. So if uh, if R is a it's finitely a generated K algebra by zero sigma yeah. is finite dimensional as a K vector space. Why did you say it's interesting? Oh, so it's it would be good to know. Is it would be helpful for, for various reasons. Oh, is that which uh, are? Yeah. And uh, but it would be for, for some uh, say arithmetic uh, applications we were having in mind, even even uh, and me. Yeah. So um, in, yeah, in fact, he, he keeps asking uh, that that question. <laughs> so <laughs> could you, if it's not uh, and if it's for public release? Yeah. So, so I, I would like to, to speak about this uh, now. But, but, but there are arithmetic applications in mind. And, and yes, yeah. Okay. yeah. okay, and also, um, so it's true. It's it's I, I proved it for for Hopf algebra. Okay, so for Hopf algebra, you you can show it. Yeah. So that, that by zero sigma is is finite dimensional. If the, the Hopf algebra is finitely sigma generated. Is it related at all to the questions about finite generation of rings of invariance? You had a group. And yeah. I think this is Gawa. Are these realized as rings of invariance of subgroups of some group? Probably not. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> Take I'm back not. that question. <laughs> yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> well, the other question is: Can you, given a, I guess right, sigma separable extension, can you embed it in one that looks like a sigma group? Sigma separable group. Well, There's the, an analog of the statement that a separable field extension can be embedded into uh, a Galois extension. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. These fields must be related to the Gawa and subgroups of the Gawa group, no? So 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 here we actually always assume that the, the fields are so separate definition. So as as fields. So um yeah, so, so you can always embed them in a, in a, some Galois extension, which also comes with a sigma. Yeah. But, but, then, but, that, but this but is kind of trivial here. But that may not be sigma finite generator anymore. When you extend okay. it. But okay. you, you can do that. You can do that. So in, in, in fact, I think, yes, yes. So in, in fact, yes, it's, it's, it's not trivial actually. So um, if you have, so, the, so the, your, your question, just to be clear, what is the question? So if um, say this is a, this is a, a finite, a finite. Um, 